putting together quick concept art just with a little bit of line and colour just to show an idea, in this case a space studio workshop with a space elevator, really loose, really concept. This is done in sketchbook but what I want to show you is quick ways of putting it together maybe through sketchbook but into Photoshop where you can actually quickly change the colours. It's okay to do your colour setup, but if it's not right, you want to change it, here's a quick technique to do it. So it was actually done in Sketchbook. If I just click and show you the line art there, and mainly because just using a pencil tool or the pen tool, and in fact any of these tools, even the old tools such as uh, the French curves, you can see that you can basically shape it and quickly put together lots of line work. Of course, this is just saved as a Photoshop file. By default, it'll open up in Photoshop as well. So I'm just going to close it out from Sketchbook. So basically, it was Sketchbook there. I'm not going to say that one. And I just want to go to um, Photoshop. So here's the Photoshop file. I've just opened it up straight into Photoshop. The same thing. There's my um, files there with the line work, etc. Now, sometimes it's great to do your sketchbook lines, if you want lines, in Sketchbook and then just open up into Photoshop and do all the brushwork in Photoshop. Now depending on what you want to do, um, this is a result of this work, but I'm just going to click all the way back down to just the initial pencil. So it was just a quick, very fast pencil and then basically just taken through and completed this way. But what I want to show you is working with grayscale and gradient maps. So the reason for doing that is when your art director or the producer, or the director, or anybody wants to see some color themes, be it a game, concept, or for film, or whatever it's gonna be, but just to give you some different ideas. So let's say it was done in grayscale, because sometimes you do it in color, not the right colors, but grayscale will give you a better definition of tone. But anyway, in this case, I'm just gonna go from my mode here, and I'm just gonna go, um, I can actually go to grayscale, or I can just go to um, basically down here, in order to basically desaturate it or go straight to grayscale as well but I'm just going to desaturate the whole thing or in actual fact I'll just go to grayscale and then it'll just do the whole mode nice and quick and I'm not going to merge it I'm just going to leave it separate so I'll just go discard all the color so here's a grayscale image and actually the grayscale is not too bad on this but the problem here is I've got all these files. I don't want the pencil one, so I'm just going to leave that off and turn it off altogether. But what I want to do is I want to work with doing um, a color map or color gradient map. So how do you do that? Well, basically what I'm going to do first, I'm just going to actually zoom in and just get just my artwork so it makes it a little bit easier to see what's going on here. And I'm just going to go and just crop that just for now. So I've just cropped the file, just deselect it. And actually, I might just um, save this as, I'll just call it uh, through here, I'm just going to call it uh, gradient or, or gray, make it easy to work out. Okay, and that's fine. Now, what I want is just any one of the lines selected here, and I want to basically just make this one file. So I know I've got a couple of lines here, I might just tweak that just a little bit, just might as well do it properly to begin with, just so it's nice and clean. I'll just crop it once more. That's great, and it's definitely the gray version, so I'll just save that once more. Now, what you do have to remember is just down under here, how big is this document getting? It's only 6.72 megabytes, but what's really good to do is just go and uh, just the fly out here, just out of range, of, there's something called scratch sizes, scratch sizes. So if I click on that, see what the size is? 2.61 way way bigger than what it was now you have to make sure that this size on the left is smaller than the size on the right that way you know it's not going to crash on you but 2.6 gigabytes that's the scratch size the space required to do all the calculations so i'm just going to go back to document size up here there it is just back in document size so massively smaller when you see what that is anyway i'll just deselect that what i want to do is i want to merge all of these layers together I'm actually going to get rid of my pencil drawing there. don't want that anymore in this gray file. But I do want everything converted to one, but not um, just to squash it down. I might need to use something later on. So just a nice little technique is 
we can just click up on here if I just move that in a little bit further should come in a bit there um, if I click there what you're going to see is oh, if I'm just on the layers here and I click that it's just outside of uh, your view here but it'll be down the bottom that says merge visible merge visible okay but before I click on that in fact if I click on it it's merged everything. Now that's going to be fine what I want to work with, but I've actually can't go back and repair that. So if I just go undo Command Z on the Mac, Control Z on a PC, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the same thing again, making sure that any one of my layers I'm going to merge is selected. And when I go to Merge Layers or Merge Visible, I hold down my Option key or Alt key in the PC. And see what it's done there? It's left all these other ones alone, I can just turn those off, and it's done this composite here. So uh, just a nice little technique, just hold down your option key when you merge, and you basically have something to fall back on if something goes wrong. Anyway, I've got my gradient layer here, I'm just going to call it, um, I think I'll just call it, uh, I'll just call it grad, just so I know what's going on here. And right down the bottom with the selected, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down and just click on this little um, icon here, which is basically gives me the ability, um, if I just click on this, and they're just coming down a little bit, but it's just outside view, but it says gradient map, gradient map, it's right down near the bottom, and if I click on that, basically what it's doing is, from that selection, it's doing a gradient, and here's a gradient map, but hold it, what's wrong with this? If I look at my option or my gradient up here, if I click on that, it actually brings in this gradient here. Now for this to work, what you want is something just off white and something just off black or any color at all. In fact, I'll just go and click on a color that I've probably got on here and let's have a look at that. So basically, it's going in very contrasting mode. Now what have I done wrong here? If I just come back into my mode here just make sure we've gone back to rgb now a lot of people make this mistake and they think what's going on so i'm just going to go to rgb and rgb is the best one i won't merge that i'll just leave that as it is and now if i click on that i can click on any of my colors now the secret as i mentioned is having a color that's going to be let's I'll just click on that for example and you see how that's merged in here okay um i click on black and white but what you do is you just click in the, and click on the color and you really ideally want something that's just just off um, being black so a little bit lighter and you're going to find you get a little bit of a better result so um, and then I'll go down to my lights here so I'll just go okay to that one and then I'll come down to the slight version and I might just uh, click on a little bit of warmth to just warm it up there and you see you get a nice result here. You can add anything in the middle. If I just click in there, then I can actually even add another color. And maybe I'm just going to see if that deserves something else. It's going to just give it a little bit of extra form there as it's coming up. Maybe even warm it up a little bit if I want to. That's a little bit too much. But I need that to be darker. So it's basically not too many colors, but you can make anything you want there. So I'm just going to go OK for a minute. But um, also what I want to do with this one, so basically this is custom. I'm going to call this grad one, just so I know what's going on there. Grad one, you can call it anything you like there. And I'm just going to go new, okay? And it's popped in here. Now, if I click on this fly out here, you can see small thumbnails. You can also see it if it needs to be a list. So basically if I click down here, you can see grad one. Okay, so I'm just going to leave it in my little thumbnails because it's just easier to see. So we've created this new file here. So you can do a whole range of these really quickly showing your art director or um, uh, the artist or the um, producer, whoever you want to do relating to games, relating to scenes. Remember, it's only just a quick concept coming up with and you, you want to show quickly what it is. So basically, if I just go, um, I'll just go OK with this one. And um, I'll click back here, and maybe we just want to have a look at um, the first one again, or another one. And now this is really hot and really vibrant. So maybe too many colors in this one. I can just drag it off the like so, and it 
pulls it down a little bit or drag that further over um, or even drag that uh, off altogether and just drag that over the other side click on that and maybe just lighten down again so you see how fast it is to do in terms of just getting quick concepts but hold it that's showing the whole picture at, at the, at the same way and maybe you don't want that so let's just go okay for the time being so we've got our picture there we've got the gradient the first one selected but what I'm going to do now is I'm going to come over to my path tools here now I can do this by creating a selection tool maybe I'll just show you this first so if I just click on here and I'm just going to do a polygon selection and um, maybe because this is a little bit easier in fact I'll just go from the polygon uh, lasso tool um, instead of doing it freeform I'm just going to click on a rigid one here so if I just make a selection and I just take it through like so Maybe if I just wanted to quickly change that color there. So notice the selection. When I come back down here, I go back down to the same tool. It might be just out of view again for, for you, but it says gradient map. Gradient map, just like it says up there. And I'm just going to click another one. And see this other one has appeared there. And this time I've got those colors. And it's, it's the same picture that we're working with. We're just changing, sort of like layers, but we're doing it with gradients. I don't like that one I can come to maybe that one or this one or back to one of the ones I had before so you can see how in one file you can really color up all the gradients but let's get a little bit more control so what I'm going to do with this one I'm just going to um, I'll just go uh, okay with this for the time being but what I'm going to do in order to get a little more, more control with this is I'm going to come into my path tools as I mentioned before so path tool and with the path tool, let's go over and make a bit of a selection. So let's see the path down here. What I want is just my pen tool. And I'm going to do the whole oval here. So if I come over here, just click and drag. So I'm just doing a shape. Now remember, a circle basically is four points. So to make a really good circle, you just really want to do four points there. Now it's not perfect at this stage. You can probably see the file up here. So I can just click back on here and just click on any one of those and I can just tweak it until I'm happy with the look and feel. And I'll just move that in there and that's fine for the time being. Just click on there, maybe I'll just bring that one a little bit. But it's still really fast to work with. Now the advantage of this is if I just uh, double click on this and I can call this path one or sphere one um, or dome one I might just call it that dome one so I can make as many of these work paths as I want and here it is in place like what I want to do is I just want to make a selection of the whole thing so to deselect it I just click in the gray here just over at this side and select it there it is selected then I just simply go up here and it's just out of view of you again but it's just like just make selection and I want to make a selection maybe not too sharp I'm just going to make it slightly feathered and just one there so I've made the same selection as before and just simply come back to my layers I'm on my um, gradient maps here I'm just going to add another one in here so click on this all the way down until you see gradient map not gradient not up here but gradient map it'll be right down the bottom and there's my other one in here which I can go through and I'll just click on this one to start changing it. So I'll just go OK and if I want to add this in, of course I'll just go New and give it a name. I'll call it Grad2. And there's my file which is in there and I can use those because they'll be stored in the gradients all the time. So I'll just go OK. So of course we can go and tweak that if you're not happy with it until we get it looking at just as we like and maybe just warm it up a little bit there but nonetheless any segment any part of this I can use that one grayscale file and quickly create a whole lot of graphic colored files so whether you're working through Photoshop alone or sketchbook in Photoshop or any other tool in Photoshop even from Illustrator and putting something together really quickly sometimes work with grayscale because it's so much easier to make up all of these colors 
and if you've done a color one at least this gives you an option on how to do multiple colors really quickly just to show all the different concepts depending on the different scenes that you want to conjure up for especially for a storyboard to make life a lot easier so thank you for watching